I started with Stargate. I loved the movie. Uh, just thought it was wonderful. I like James Spader and, you know, Kurt, whatever his name is. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, 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 I love the movie. And then when I heard that they were going to have a TV series and it was going to star MacGyver, and I loved MacGyver, man, I had, I, I actually subscribed to Showtime just so I could watch Stargate when it first came out on Showtime for the first couple of years. Um, uh, so yeah, I've always been a sci fan. I'm a, I'm a Trekkie, you know, I love, uh, love Trek. Uh, and then a lot of the other ones, fringe and, um, the warehouse 13 mm -hmm. and all the rest of the crazy ones that came and went. I was just a bit, I've always been a big fan of all those. So you decided, uh, it was this 2005, 2006 to do a creation convention in Vancouver. Uh, well, I, Stargate. I had moved in 2003 to San Diego mm -hmm. and uh, found out after having lived in Hawaii for 27 years that you in, living in San Diego, you can get in your car and actually drive somewhere else, which I think was, you know, that's a concept. <laughs> uh, so I, ha I found out they were having a Stargate convention up in Anaheim, and that was only like 45 minutes north. So I went to the convention, got in a hotel. You know, I, I had a chance to meet uh, a few of the stars and, you know, and the, and the directors and producers and so much, so many of the, of the fans. And it was just a wonderful experience. And it was, uh, at, at the end of the convention, they announced that next year's convention was going to be in Vancouver and they were going to include a set tour. And man, that, that sold me right there. And I signed up the next day and I was ready to go to Vancouver. So the next year, and that was probably oh five or so, I went up to Vancouver and uh, that is where I met N. John Smith, executive producer, uh, they, uh, you know, they would have uh, signings, uh, autograph sessions here and there, and, and then they would have stage uh, lectures, you know, the seminar kind of things were, well, they had one uh, presentation where it was John Smith and two of the directors, Martin Wood and Andy Makita, and they were all on stage together answering questions. And I, I just loved, loved that part of it. Uh, somebody asked John Smith. It was so funny. He was what that, I guess what they call a line producer. Yes. Basically, he was in charge of the, the money scheduling, uh, mundane stuff that really has nothing, not really much to do with making movies, but more running a business. Yes. Uh, and uh, somebody asked John Smith, one of the questions he got was, Mr. Smith, you remember an episode Umpty Flats where this, they did this and they did that? Do you know why they did it that way? And John sat there and thought and said, you know, I don't know why they did it that way, but I can tell you what it cost. <laughs> That's so, right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was my part uh, was, of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions they got toward the end of their session was, you know, everybody else has a table to sign autographs. How come you guys don't have a table to sign autographs? And they looked over to the guy that was in charge and said, you know, we'll sign if you want us to. Right. And, and so they put a table out in the hall at the end of the hall yeah. with three chairs behind it. And they set those three guys down behind and people could stand, line up in the hall and get their autographs. Well, the next session after theirs was another one I wanted to go to. So I was in the, uh, in the hall and toward the end of it, I came out and there were only like four or five more people left in line for these three, the two, two producers and the executive producer, two directors and exec. So at that time, I had come up with my own little scheme to be remembered. And I had a picture of myself standing in front of a submarine in the Arctic. And I autographed it. You know, it's eight by 10. I, had, I printed them up on my computer at home. Uh, <laughs> I autographed this picture. And then on the back of it, I had a little sticker that had my name and telephone number and email address on it. And whenever one of the stars would autograph a picture for me, I would give them an autograph picture of me. And uh, so uh, I, got, I finally got to the end, of, uh, up to the line. I was basically, practically the last person in line. And because of my personality or whatever, I tend to gravitate toward the person in charge. I just do. I mean, it's that way nowhere, wherever I go. And uh, John Smith was in the middle. I didn't ignore Martin Wood or Andy Makita, but I stood in front of John Smith and I handed them each a picture of me after I got them to autograph a picture. And John says, well, what is this? And I said, well, this is 
uh, me is what I do for a living. I, you know, I'm, I work for the U.S. Navy and I go to the Arctic on submarines. And John, you know, he said, you know, I've been trying to get to the Arctic for like 10 years on those Russian icebreakers or something. I've been, I want to go to the North Pole. Can you get me up to the North Pole? And I think he was just, you know, making conversation and being, you know, nice. Right. And I said, well, well, Mr. Smith, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I can't get you to the North Pole, but I might be able to get you to an ice camp a couple of hundred miles south of the North Pole. Well, he beamed and handed me a business card and said, now, if you're serious, you give me a call. So um, I, I didn't know if I was serious or not. Now, I'm the officer in charge of the camp, but it, it's somebody above my pay grade that decides who get to go, who gets to go and what's going to happen. They tell me and then I make it happen. So I came back and talked to my boss at Arctic Sub Lab, told him the thing. My boss, a uh, very good friend of mine. We were more like friends than co-workers. Uh, he was a sci-fi fan, but had never got into Stargate. Uh, but I, he said, now that Stargate thing, he said, now that's that's Air Force, isn't it? I said, yeah, the uh, Air Force special, you know, special ops are the guys that run the Stargate in Cheyenne Mountain and stuff. He says, ah, all right. He said, well, you know, what do you have in mind? And I said, well, I'd kind of like to see if we can get maybe two or three of the on-screen people to come up and maybe get them to uh, agree to sign autographs or take pictures when we have the submarine surface through the ice. And that would be kind of like a morale thing for the crew, mm -hmm. you know, uh, instead of a boondoggle for the Stargate people, who are Canadian, by the way. <clears throat> and uh, he said, well, I guess if we can if we can sell it as some something good for the crew, we might be able to sell it to Big Navy. Let me see what I can do. So he starts liaisoning them with the people in Washington, D.C., and I let it go. Uh, I talked to John Smith. Well, I talked after Jeff said, yeah, we might be able to do it. I, I got my business card out, and I composed just a glorious email to John Smith about what we could do and stuff like that. And I sent it off. And then about 15 seconds later, I get the return bing that says uh, this email address is not valid. Oh. And I thought, well, you know, but – I am not. I am not shy, and there was a phone number on the card. Correct. So, and he did give it to I, you. Yeah, I pa I picked up the phone and dialed, and it, ring, ring, ring. Stargate, can I help you? And I said, yes, um, yes. Uh, this is Barry Campbell. I met uh, Mr. Smith at a convention a few weeks ago, and I wonder if I might be able to talk with him for you know. Well, the secretary, uh, who I learned to love, is his gatekeeper. Yeah. And of course, here is a crazy fan that met Mr. Smith at a convention that now wants to talk to him on the phone. I don't think so. Uh, so she said, well, Mr. Smith is not in his office right now. I think he's down on the set. I said, well, okay. Um, he was probably in the office. I said, okay, well, can I leave a message for him? Uh, or when will he be back? Oh, it should be two or three hours, you know. I said, well, can I leave a message in case he comes back earlier? Yeah, he doesn't really return calls like that, but I'll take your name and number. So she took my name and number. Well, three minutes later, ring, ring, ring. Hey, Barry, it's John Smith. <laughs> and that's how we that's how we started i told him what was going on a little bit in that so we were looking at doing maybe two or three of the on-screen personalities and a couple of support people to come up for one night just to fly up uh stay there overnight and then fly back to prudhoe the next day and we could if we could we could do that uh and then a, a week or two or a couple weeks later jeff calls me into his office my boss and he said, Barry, I was just watching a show on TV called E-Ring. Do you remember that show? Me? It was about E-Ring. E-Ring. Oh. It, was, it, was it was about the Pentagon. Oh. Uh, uh, and the E-Ring, you know, they have A, B, C, and D, and E-Rings in the Pentagon. Okay. And it was a show, a military show, but it centered in the Pentagon. Never and he, uh, it. You know, okay. he said, I, I was watching this show, and it's got Army and Navy and Air Force and Marines. They're all interacting in the Pentagon. He said, I wonder if the uh, Stargate people would be interested in in filming in the Arctic and not just not just being coming up for a visit. Uh, the Navy could support that, you know. And I said, well, you know, I'm I don't know a lot about it. But my understanding is that if they live, they leave their studio and go two blocks away, they take like seven tra semi trailers full of stuff and 150 people uh, to go, you know, on a remote shoot. And of course, we can't support anything like that. He said, no, we can't. He said, well, why don't you call them up and see what kind of how, if they could do a skeleton crew and come up and do filming for, you know, a day or two. So I called John back and I told him and he said, man, I don't know. He said, you know, we take a lot of people when we go. I said, we could probably 
do maybe 15 people, maybe 5,000 pounds a year for, you know, two or three days. If you could, you know, get any, you know, maybe you could get background scenery or anything, then we might be able to do that. He said, well, let me think about it. Then I get called back into Jeff's office again. And he said, I was talking to Big Navy and they said that we not we would be able to probably let them film a submarine surfacing through the ice. And we might be able to let them get on the submarine and film too while they're up there. And I said, man, these guys are going all out. Let me talk to John. Yeah. So I called John. He says, I don't know, Barry, let me see. So here's the story I heard because I wasn't there, but John tells me he went into Martin Wood's office. No, no, Brad Wright. He went into Brad Wright's office. The the big, you know, the, yep. the, uh, the head guy in charge. And he says, um, Brad, I met this guy at a, at a convention and he works for the U.S. Navy and the submarine force. And he can get us up to the Arctic and film on and in a submarine coming through the ice in the Arctic. What do you think? And Brad says, you know, John, I don't know if you've watched the show, but we go, we use the Stargate to go to other planets. Uh, he said, now we could probably use the Arctic as maybe an ice planet or something like that. But then when a nuclear submarine, a U.S. nuclear submarine comes bursting up through the ice, that would kind of blow the illusion, don't you think? And John said, well, yeah, but, you know, you're the guy in charge. You're the brains. You're the inspiration behind this thing. Figure it out. And then he left. And so Brad figured it out. Uh, and it turned out uh, after two years of working back and forth and after Brad was able to come up with this script, uh, we got 18 people from the Stargate company up at the camp for seven days. And uh, they... Uh, because the Navy wasn't uh, in the pro in the in the business of supporting production companies, we charged them uh, uh, for the food they were going to eat, for the huts we had to build, for helicopter time, all the rest of that stuff. And John tells me later, man, he said that was a bargain. He said wow. you could have charged us, you could have charged us five times that we would have paid it, <laughs> but we just wow. charged them what it cost. we just charged them what it cost. And uh, anyway, it was. Uh, and then we, you know, we made it happen then. So it was two years after I met John that we got him up to an ice camp. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.